What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. As you can see on screen, Legend Cracker is about to arrive on One Piece Treasure Cruise Global, which is exciting. I am super excited for Legend Cracker. He's honestly one of my most anticipated legends to come out in this game. He is really powerful. Uh, I will actually go ahead and talk about him in this video as well. But before I talk about the unit itself, we have to address the actual Sugo Fest. Now, a lot of people on the Discord server um, have already discussed this already. This is probably one of the worst treasure map sugo fests we've ever had just in terms of the structure itself and you guys will understand that as we go through this through it in this video but we can see here the treasure map sugo fest debuts on the 12th of august and part two will start on the 15th of august so we can safely assume at this point that the 15th of august will be the beginning of the treasure map versus smoothie and oven smoothie and oven have already been input into the uh the voyage log so we already know that they are indeed coming which is good to see but anyways, we have Legend Cracker here. There is two new rare recruits along with Cracker as well. There's a new Jinbei and a new Pound unit. Both of these characters are treasure map point booster characters along with Cracker. I believe Cracker will be the highest point booster in this treasure map. But let's talk about the Sugo Fest structure because that is the reason why a lot of people are in, are in an uproar right now about this Sugo Fest because it's just... It's, it's actually unacceptable. It really is unacceptable, especially with the previous changes that we had with Treasure Map, where the Treasure Map units now are only 1.1 times point boosters. Previous Treasure Map Rare Recruit characters were already, like, devalued already to 1.2 times point boosters. Just, there's so many things wrong here. There are so many things wrong with Treasure Map, and it is going downhill very, very quickly. And I really hope Bandai understand this, that this is not the right direction that they should be heading in. This is not good for free-to-play players. This is not good for whales either you guys will understand why so Jinbei and Pounder here, when you pull them, they come with max level, max special, max sockets. Already knew that, which is great. Uh, it is going to be, obviously, gold only Sugo Fest, uh, gold or higher Sugo Fest. If you do pull Jinbei and Pound, you can actually sell them at the Rayleigh shop for more points now, which, okay, they didn't need to do that. That's not the right direction they should be heading in whatsoever. They should definitely do other things compared to this. I mean, if you do get a lot of dupes of the character, um, you can feed them to Rayleigh Shop, which, it, which it's fine. It's fine, but it's like, it's not an update that everyone really wanted. Um, but anyways, this is the reason why this Sugo Fest is bad. So we already know, guaranteed four star or better, that's good. But then, the structure. So we already know Treasure Map Sugo Fest, they have three structures for part one, part two, and part three. Part one is typically where you want to be doing your pulls if you are, you know, one of those people that like to grind on Treasure Maps. This is the place where you want to be pulling. Now, first multi-pull is 30 Rainbow Gems. We always love that. We always bless the discounts. That is basically a norm at this point. Every single Sugo Fest will have discounted multi-pulls. Well, even other banners, even random banners will have 30 gem multis as well. Now, here is where things get really bad. Previously, on other Treasure Map Sugo Fest, to my recollection, every single other Treasure Map, second multi, you're guaranteed to get one of the Treasure Map Rare Recruit Point Booster characters. That has been a stock standard for many, 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 many months on One Piece Treasure Cruise Global. Second multi right now, and the sixth multi, last one in poster, is guaranteed to be a rate boosted character. So, okay, two things with this. Number one, you don't get a guaranteed point boosted character uh, on the second multi. It's it's a chance. It's a rate boosted character, and that is the that is the bad thing of number two is the fact that it's a rate boosted character. If it was a recommended character guaranteed, that would be actually pretty cool because if you click on the banner here for recommended characters, you've got Cracker V2 Cutter. Curry, you've got the new Jinbei, the new Pound, and then you've got the V2 German uh, Niji and also Yonji. So imagine getting one of those guaranteed on the second and sixth multi. Myself, personally, I would be kind of okay-ish with that, but still, it's kind of bad the fact that the Treasure Map Rare Recruit character is no longer guaranteed on the second multi. And then we move over to the third multi. Now, with previous Treasure Map Sugo Fests, third multi is a guaranteed legend. This time, third multi is guaranteed five-star pound, which is the Treasure Map Rare Recruit character. So what they've done here, they've now made it an additional multi to get the Treasure Map Rare Recruit character, and they have moved the uh, guaranteed legend to step four. So now it's four multis for a guaranteed legend. <sighs> Dude, this is the worst Treasure Map Sugo Fest I've seen. It is just absolutely poor. Very, very poor. So multi four and multi seven uh guaranteed legends now remember in between that on multi six you get another guaranteed rate boosted character 
again, should have been recommended character at that point. The ninth multi is guaranteed to be five star Jinbei. Now, for those of you who have been staying up to date with the previous treasure map Sugo Fests, typically, Multi 2 is a guaranteed treasure map rare recruit character. Multi 5 is the other treasure map rare recruit character. But now you have to do 9 multi pulls now on global to get the other booster. It's absolutely unacceptable. This is unacceptable. Jinbei should have been guaranteed on the 5th. Pound should have been guaranteed on the 2nd. And the same red structure of 3, 6, 8, 10, 12 is what it should have been. They've completely thrown that out the window. Multi 10 is a limited pool Sugo Fest exclusive. 12th pool is a limited pool Sugo Fest exclusive as well with max special level. Now, the thing is, if when you actually look at this, they've actually taken out a guaranteed legend spot. Previously, it was 3, 6, 8, 10, 12. That's five different guaranteed legends throughout the whole structure. This time, it's 4, 7, 10, 12. Only four legends this time around. I'm actually, I'm actually like super duper shocked that they've done this. Considering all the, the backlash that Bandai got from the previous treasure map with the, the different changes that they've done where characters no longer will give you as, as many more points and the fact that the previous treasure map characters weren't uh, you know, as valuable for as long, I thought that maybe, maybe we would continue on some good stead here. But we're just not. It's I'm I'm very 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 upset with this. Uh, then moving on to uh, multis two and three or part two and three. It's essentially the same structure uh, except that this time around you are guaranteed to get the legend on three six and eight uh, outside of part one, which is just uh, it, uh, I'm so I'm so upset with this man. God damn, I'm so upset with this. But anyways, in terms of the limited pool legends, which gives us a hint as to the rate boosted characters for part one, obviously Cracker is here. You have V2 Cutter Curry Charlotte. Lin Lin, V2 Sanji, Soul King Brook, and Gear 4 Luffy. A pretty good array of characters raid boosted for part one. Uh, part two, you've got Cracker, you have Sanji and Judge dual units, Whitebeard and Marco dual unit, Sabo, uh, which I believe is the Dex Sabo, Luffy and Ace, and version one Katakuri. And then for part three, you've got Cracker, uh, Sulong Carrot, uh, Quick Whitebeard, Dogstorm and Cat Viper, Jack, and uh, V2 Jimbei. Uh, I think that the Raid Boosted Legends are actually pretty good, but it's just the structure of part one, man. <sighs> All I can say is just disappointment. I am very disappointed in uh, in this Sugo Fest. But anyways, uh, talking about the new character, right? Let's talk about the, the other characters first. So Pound. Pound is guaranteed on multi-3, as I said, of part 1. His special ability reduces the crew's increased damage taken and special bind duration by 3 turns, which is actually really good, and reduces all enemies' damage reduction, which is the Rainbow Shield, by 3 turns. He's actually got a very, very good uh, utility-based special ability, and the artwork there, oh my god, rest in peace, Pound. He's getting absolutely destroyed by Oven there. Uh, does he have the... Yes, he does resist it by 2 turns. Okay, would have been nice if he resisted it by 3 turns, because he does reduce it by 3 turns uh that is a little odd i will admit uh, and then talking about the jimbei so this is the unit guaranteed on the ninth multi pull the brand new jimbei special will go ahead and reduce your crew's bind and lock chain multiply duration by three turns which is good uh deals 50 times attack and quick damage to all enemies at the end of the turn for three turns which is okay as well uh boost powerhouse characters attack uh, slot effects my bad by 1.75 and well it's a scaling factor so between 1.75 and 2.25 depending on your navigation level so he's a he's an all booster inside treasure map but outside of that he does give you a little bit of utility and end of turn damage which is uh, pretty awesome so pretty cool unit but then again guaranteed on the ninth multi i don't think too many people are going to be doing nine multis just for this jimbei i just don't think it's that worth it and then the new sugo fest exclusive character which is going to be cracker artwork looking beastly captain ability of this guy will boost powerhouse characters attack by 3.75 times so it's a flat 3.75 boost and then uh fighter slasher striker and shooter characters will get 1.35 times hp uh, which obviously is not too bad, uh, but it's a very, very straightforward, very easy to comprehend captain ability, but still, even though it's very easy, very simplistic, not very unique either, it is just good. It is good. You will be able to click content with this guy as a captain with a flat 3.75 boost. Now, in terms of his special, now this is the reason why this guy honestly is one of the best subs in the entire game. Special, 16 turn cooldown, which is quite high, but it's, it's good. Changes your crew's empty 
block, bomb, recovery, and G orbs into character's own type. And then if your captain is either a fighter, slasher, striker, or a shooter, he gives you a 1.1 times chain boost for two turns, or he adds 1.1 times for two turns. So for those of you who who, uh, who don't really uh, like understand how powerful of a boost that is, it's V2 Shanks. So you know V2 Shanks, when you use his special, you get the full board of orbs, type boost, and the 0.9 chain boost. This guy's a 1.1 times chain boost, and it's for two turns, for two turns. And then on top of that, so th that was only if your captain is fighter, slasher, shooter, striker. Now, if your captain is free spirit driven powerhouse or cerebral, you get a uh, 1.75 times color affinity for two turns for those four classes, free spirit driven cerebral powerhouse. He does so many things. He is just going to be a, a, a very, very useful character to have on so many different teams. Namingly, V2 Katakuri is going to be uh, amazing with this guy. Uh, you can use him on a Sanji and Judge team. You can use him with Snake Man. There's so many options for this guy. It's so good. He is so powerful. Uh, he does have two crewmate abilities. Uh, this one's going to reduce character special charge time by one turn. Every time another powerhouse or slasher character uses a special, which is great considering his cooldown is reasonably high. you getting that same ability to just continuously lower his own cooldown is always going to be very very key and his other one will boost powerhouse and slashes based uh, stats by 100 which is very very good as well now another key thing i want to talk about with legend cracker is his support ability which supports katakuri and smoothie specifically but when you have it at level 5, once per quest, when your crew is inflicted with decreased chain multiplier growth rate or lock chain multiplier, he will go ahead and reduce it by 3 turns and then add 0.7 to your combo for 1 turn. Like, what? He just is such a good utility-based unit. Like, this guy is phenomenal. He is so good. The fact that you can go ahead and attach him to a character, and whenever you're inflicted with the really annoying chain debuffs, gets rid of three turns of it, and then add your own one on top of it. And it's a 0.7 chain boost as well. I believe Quick Whitebeard is also a chain, uh, 0.7 chain boost as well. So you guys can understand just how useful that is. Uh, what is the scaling factor of it? So it starts at 0.3, goes to 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and then 0.7, as well as the utility will obviously get better over time as well. So Legend Cracker, dude, I am very, very much looking forward to potentially getting Legend Cracker sometime in the future because he is really, really good. But it is just such a goddamn shame that he is on a Sugo Fest that really is very, very poor. Now, for those of you out there who are considering pulling on a Treasure Map Sugo Fest, you really shouldn't be pulling on Treasure Map Sugo Fest unless if you are a player that likes to spend cash on this game, of course, like most other Treasure Map Sugo Fests. But even if you're one of those people that spends money on this game, I don't know, with the structure of this Sugo Fest, you have to be extremely, extremely lucky to be content with your pulls with this specific Sugo Fest, man. I just really wish that Bandai would have fixed this one up because they are definitely heading in the wrong direction. I hope that the boosted list for this treasure map is going to be better than what it was last treasure map. I hope that they do realize the complaints that the community has had. And they, and they make some swift changes because this is just unacceptable. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys are excited for Legend Cracker as much as I am. And if you guys are, make sure to smack the like button. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But other than that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.